Hey friends, Dylan Bates here, the Final Cut Bro. Today we are going to be taking a look at this really nice looking 3D parallax effect and I'm going to show you how to create it within Motion 5. So let's go ahead and get started. So step one, you are going to need to do the really long process of cutting out all of your elements from your photo. And the more layers that you can actually have, the better this effect is going to look. So it's going to be up to you how detailed you want this particular parallax effect to look. But because I love you guys so much and want to save you a lot of time so you can just get right into the motion side, I will have a free download to the Photoshop file that I used uh, with all the assets pre-cut out for you. So you can just use that and uh, save yourself some time and follow through with the rest of this tutorial. However, if you want to do this for your own individual photos, you're gonna need to cut everything out. Some important aspects to note. Once you have cut out a layer, you're gonna to wanna to use something like the content aware fill or the stamp tool or whatever your particular photo editing software has to fill in the areas that you have cut out. And that's gonna be very important for providing the 3D effect. Now, luckily in Affinity Photo, this particular photo worked really well with the in paint tool. Um, it cleared up all the layers really quickly for me and um, I didn't have to spend too much time there. The next aspect to take note of is you're gonna need to export your photo as a Photoshop file um, so that Motion can identify each of the layers in your folder. Okay, let's dive into the Motion side of things. We are just gonna come on up here in Motion and go to File, New From Project Browser. From there, we are just gonna select the Motion Project and you can set your preset to whatever you want. I am going to just actually set this to 1080 this time and I'm gonna set the frame rate to 2398. And I like to set the duration to something like 10 seconds, but that is totally up to you. Then you can just push Open. After that, just go ahead and push Command-I and that will allow us to import our file that we need. And we will just jump into our affinity files here and we will find our bro on a mountain photo. And we'll go ahead and import that. That'll bring up this box hopefully for you with your layer name. And we actually want to choose all layers and that will bring in the entire photo with every layer we had in that project. Now I actually have a few extra layers on accident. So we can just delete those. Um, I don't need that layer, don't really need that layer, and I actually don't need the end background layer either. So once those are all cleaned out, we should just have the layers that we actually want. Okay, from there, we are going to right click our bro on a mountain photo, and we will set that to a 3D group. And we will also right click this top group and set that to a 3D group. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is we're actually gonna need a camera for this project. So we're just gonna come up here to add object, click that and go to camera. And now you will notice, let's see if I can select our camera. We can go into our inspector properties and if I move this around, the whole video will move with it. So now it's just gonna be a matter of setting each of these layers in 3D space so that we have some nice parallax. What I like to do is start with the foreground. So I'll select the foreground here and we will open up our position settings here and we're gonna to wanna to work off the Z axis. Now you will notice that I actually have the ability to click and drag these little handles here to move stuff on whatever axis I want. So if I want to, I can actually split this window into two separate windows. One that'll enable me to see what the camera is seeing and one that will enable me to see the project browser. Let's go ahead, click on this little box here and we will split this space into two. So you notice that the window space on the right is showing the right side and we can change which direction it is seeing. So we could go to the top or we could change it to the front, whatever we want. And I actually like to work on the top and this will just show me how far something is in 3D space. So let's take this foreground element. I'm gonna actually reset it because we want our guy to be on the same Z space. So we'll select our foreground and our person and we can just drag this 
in Z space here and I can actually come up here and click and drag up towards our camera which is indicated by this yellow icon here and we'll just get it to a place that we are happy with that seems pretty good now if we want to move this on the Y axis we can just come over to the position properties and drag it up from there so now if I select our camera and if I move this around a bit, you'll notice that there's a little bit of 3D parallax going on. So if we really want to accentuate this, we're gonna want the background to be considerably further than the foreground is. So let's go ahead and select our mountains and our sky, and we can click on this blue arrow and drag it way up into the distance. Now, it is not quite filling up the frame, so to fix that, we're just gonna come on over to our properties tab here, and we'll just drag up our scale until it does fill in the frame. So now we are in a good place where if I move this camera, we can see the mountains, we can see the sky, and it's looking really nice and 3D. One thing that I really like to do is add in a foreground element that really brings some depth to the scene. Typically, if I have the ability, I'll take a rock or something that I cut out in the 3D parallax. So luckily we have this foreground element that I chopped out earlier. So if I want to, I can just push Command D and that will duplicate the foreground. And I'm just gonna call it the super foreground <laughs> just so I can tell which one is which. And let's go ahead and take the super foreground and we are just gonna drag it even closer in Z space. And we're gonna want it really, really close here. And it will be blurred, so you won't be able to tell that it's actually a duplicate of the other scene. So we'll just get it up a little higher. Let's see if I can work on the, the Y axis here. We definitely don't want it to take up too much of the screen, so we can scale it down. And we'll just get it into a good spot here just using some of these parameters. Perfect, so now if I move the camera, you'll see the amount of depth that the scene has has been upped considerably. What we can do now is you'll notice there's this stick that really obviously makes it look like the foreground is identical to the, the middle ground section here. So to fix that, we are just going to select our super foreground copy come on down here to the masking tools and we will select the Bezier mask and we can just do a really quick chop off the top here and it doesn't have to be too clean just enough there we go and then we can jump on up to our HUD here and we can invert our mask so now we just have this foreground element that doesn't look completely identical to the middle ground element. Let's go ahead and animate our camera movement here so that um, we can really see the depth going on. So all we are going to do is find our original base location that we want. So I'll just pull this over here to the left considerably and I might drag it down in the Y and we just want it to kind of pop up over the top of these rocks. So we will go ahead, go to the position property here and add a keyframe. Then we can just move towards the end. We can drag our camera over here a bit and we can bring it up on the Y. And so now it looks like the camera is coming up over the top of the rocks here or it should, it's not. Okay, so for whatever reason that wasn't working, but now it is. So the, the camera is coming up over the top and just peering out at our guy on the cliff. From there, I want to add some depth of field to really add to the depth of this scene. So just come on up to your camera, select that, select your camera here. And you'll see this little depth of field option here. We'll just click show and we will have all of our depth of field settings here. But before we change anything, it's going to be important that we have depth of field enabled in our viewer. So to change that, come on up here to the top right to render and go down to depth of field. And you'll notice that things are starting to get a little bit blurry. So from there, we can just change our focus offset and that will show us by the indication of this yellow line here where the offset is going to. So we just want to line that up exactly with where our guy is here. So you'll notice as the camera moves, the offset actually changes. So we could actually animate the offset a little bit to keep him in focus the whole time. 
or we could do a rack focus, which is what I'm going to do for this frame. So to do that, we will just drag the focus offset a little bit closer. We'll add a keyframe and we can actually drag that way at the beginning. And then as we get to the top here, we want it to be focused on him and that will rack our focus. Now it's gonna be important that we really push this stuff way out of focus. So to do that, we'll just drag up our depth of field blur amount like crazy, and that should get us to a pretty good spot. And you can see that the focus is hitting him perfectly. Now it should be noted that um, if you have the filter option here set to defocus, it's going to slow your computer down a bunch, but it is far more realistic looking um, to what an actual camera would be. So what I like to do is just work with the Gaussian blur up until the very end and then swap that over to um, depth of field blur so it just looks a lot more realistic. So this is looking pretty cool and you could end the tutorial here, but I wanna add in a few extra elements to really add some depth to the scene and some life. Now the first thing that I want to do is actually change out our sky. I feel like the sky is a little bit too lifeless and so I'm just going to disable that and we're gonna bring in a new sky that I got from pexels.com for free. So I'll have a link to that in the description and I am just gonna import that with command I and I will import that. So now we have our sky here and let's go ahead and give that a little bit of Z dimension here and make sure that it is behind our um, mountains, not by too much, but just enough to give it a little depth. And let's go ahead and scale that up like crazy. I just wanna move this on the Y axis up here and get it looking nice. Now, if we play back, it's actually moving quite quickly. Let's see if I can change my views to only go to active camera. Okay, so there we go. So we've got it playing through and it's going a little bit fast. So let's just do some quick retiming to get it looking really good. To do that, we can go up to our behaviors, go down to retiming and we will do set speed. And so now we can set this to, it's already at 50%, which is really nice. And one other thing I wanna do is go into our properties and go down to timing show and we are going to set the frame blending down to optical flow. And that will just smooth out our slow motion considerably. So that is looking pretty nice. And I'm actually gonna drop the quality on this render so it plays back a little smoother for you guys. And one other thing that's a little annoying is this 3D grid here. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. We'll go on up to view and we can get rid of the 3D grid. And now it's much cleaner to look at and we can get a better idea of what we're seeing. So the very last thing I wanna do is I like to add in some like camera scratch artifacts and stuff to really make the scene um, have dimension to it. So to do that, we'll just push Command I once more. I found these dust and particle overlays online. I'll have a link to those in the description as well. And we can just scale these up like crazy. And I'm gonna split the view here again so we can see where it is in 3D space. So select it, where, where are you? There it is. And let's go ahead and drag this up. I wanna have it in front of our guy here and we can actually scale it down a bit and then we will set the blend mode here to screen. And so now as the camera moves, let's see if I can show you here. Shift Z will set it to zoom in. There's a lot more depth here because you can see those those scratches happening here. Let me uh, let me even move it a little closer to the camera so you really get that sense of depth. And unfortunately, the quality is so bad right now that you can't really tell, but it is there. And then if we go to the other dust overlay, we could scale that up a bit and we can set the blend mode on that to screen and just have that off in the distance. And so now we've got a little bit of depth going on here with some camera artifacts. 
And what you could do is sometimes I'll add in some nice mist effects or fog overlays or something like that just to give the scene a little bit more life. But this really brings the scene alive, even though it's just a 2D photo of a dude standing on a mountain. Suddenly you've got a really engaging and interesting scene. Um, and the, the photo doesn't even need to be that high of quality. Um, by adding in all these additional assets, you're really improving the quality of your photo and uh, and you can go really far with it. So with all that being said, I think the very last thing to do is to go into our camera here. Camera, set the filter to defocus so it's much more realistic. And then we can go to file, share, export movie. And we can just call this the 3D photo or whatever you want to call it and set your render settings. Make sure that you have depth of field enabled in your render settings. Otherwise it won't look like it does right now. And we can just push next and export it. And while that's exporting, you can click down here to see the, uh, the progress, which it's really choking with that depth of field blur. There we go. So that'll export and we can watch the final product. With that being said, I hope this tutorial was helpful to you in some way. If it was, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and I will see you next week. Bye.